I'm Ellen McGahey. This is my art studio here in Gulf Breeze, Florida. And I'm so glad that I guess you've purchased an art kit if you're talking to me and if you found this video. So these art kits I have for sale on ellensartkits.com. And I have, I think we're up to 34 different designs now. So on this video, I am going to show you step by step how to paint this beautiful, high textured, uh, mixed media mermaid. So um, I hope you share this with your friends on Facebook and we're gonna have a great time. So I want to show you all the contents in your art kit. I, know, I bet you're very excited that you get to paint this awesome mermaid. So I've got, you gotta get a pair of scissors. Um, you wanna cut your bag open and you've got a lot of really great uh, stuff in there. Two bags of plaster. Look at the shells. It's got glitter. It's got a really great brush. Um, the paints are awesome. And uh, here's the instructions. Um, so you're going to be following this picture to, um, you know, to make sure that you can kind of see what you're trying to paint. And this mermaid is so much fun to do. So make sure that you've got a cup of water, um, some paper towels, and also um, the paint doesn't really come out of your clothes. And so when you, um, when you, you know, if, if you get it on your clothes, you want to wash it off right away. So, um, or just, you know, wear something that you don't care about. So um, anyway, all right, you ready to start? Let's jump in. Okay, so we're gonna read the instructions. It says, first, find your plaster bag and clip the corner with the scissors. So this is the plaster right here. So you just find the little corner and you push it back like that and you clip it, all right? So we, we load these plasters and we seal this end so that the plaster doesn't come out of that end. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna create a lot of nice texture. So you can see in your instructions where all of that nice texture is. Okay, so we're gonna do the hair. And don't worry, afterwards we're gonna paint the hair. So for right now, we're just building the texture in the hair. So on your instructions it says, Squeeze about half of the bag of plaster. Into the hair area. Remember to leave enough plaster for the tail and the sand area. So that's what we wanna do. Well, I mean, we've got two bags here, so um, you can be a little bit more lenient with it. So maybe we could do one whole bag for the hair and then the other bag for the tail and the, the sand. So plaster gets down here as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and you just start squeezing it out. And you can put it on there any way you want. And then we're going to use the brush. You can also use a knife, like if you have a plastic knife, um, you can use that to kind of push this plaster around. You can use your fingers. It's kind of like frosting. Um, to me, this is one of the funnest parts of the kit. So I think I'm going to use my finger. So I'm just going to take and smooth it around. Just basically, you're filling in, you're filling in the area, and you're not too worried about the texture at this point. You can go over your aqua line a little bit. So in a minute, I'm gonna take my brush and make some nice curls once I get it all filled in. All right. That's actually kind of pretty right now. You wouldn't necessarily have to use your brush, but if you wanna, this is your brush, you just take the tape off 
and you take the cover off and you want to release it because it's kind of stiff when you first get it. So just kind of put it in your water, dry it off. Make sure that when you're drying your brush off, you, you're real careful with the tip. You just kind of pull it like that so, um, so that you don't damage the tip because you want to be able to use that, that nice point. So um, you can do this a couple ways. You can just use the brush to kind of pull through like that. Or you can, if you want more to be kind of taken off, you can use the other end. Just remember the curls, you want, you want all the hair to come from, from the scalp, so from the top. This is gonna dry pretty quick. And by the time we're finished with the rest of the picture, you'll be ready to paint your hair and you get to choose whatever hair color. I put in a lot of different colors in the kit so you can make it whatever color you like. Okay, all right, you ready for step number two? So the very next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to use the plaster again. I still have enough plaster in this bag that um, I'm gonna go ahead and put some on the tail. So that's what step number two says. Uh, put a th it says put a thin layer of plaster on the mermaid tail, not the fin, not this part, just this part. So we're gonna do that, but we're not gonna make it quite as thick as, um, as the hair, a little bit thinner. I'm just going to use my finger and smooth that out, making it kind of thin. You are going to love doing this tail. It is so fun. And it's so much fun to get your fingers in it and make all those pretty scales. We're going to put glitter in them and use sparkly paint. And I'm going to show you how I did mine, but you can do whatever you want. So you can make yours any color. Uh, and I'll show you which colors you have to kind of save on here on the palette. Some of the colors you want to save them, but for the most part, you can use any of the colors um, so that you can really be creative and make it your own. That's the whole fun of it, right? All right, so I just have it, you know, I've just got it a little bit smoothed out. And then it says, number three, next choose two colors for the mermaid tail. So um, I think I want to do purple. So you just take and you just flip that open like that. Ooh, look at that sparkly purple. That's so pretty. And let's see. On this one, I used aqua. Um, I think I'll use Periwinkle. I love Periwinkle. <laughs> That's one of my favorite. Periwinkle is one of my favorite colors. Okay, so we are going to double dip. So what you're going to do is I'm going to start by dipping my finger in the Periwinkle and then I'm going to touch the purple. So yeah, it gets a little bit in there, but that's okay. So you just make a fingerprint like that and you press and pull. You know, let's just do one color at a time so we can kind of get the idea. So you press, you see how it's just like, kind of like a fingerprint, but you push, you push the plaster so that you can see some light in the middle of it.
So I'm gonna come back in with the second color. I think maybe it's just a little easier that way. You can do it the other way if you want, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with the darker purple and, ooh, that's pretty. I like that better. It is so fun. That is beautiful. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the second row. All right, so the second row, you're going to do it sort of like bricks, like every other one. So I'm gonna start in the middle of these two. That's kind of how fish scales are. They're kind of stacked like every other one. You see how I'm pushing into the plaster? And uh, when it's finished, it just looks it just looks so cool because it looks like a little mermaid scale. How cool, huh? I am going to go ahead and finish the rest of this out and then we'll be right back. Okay, so I told you I was gonna tell you which colors um, that you should use for the mermaid that you should save. You wanna save the skin color for her skin. Uh, the hunter green, usually uh, we use that for the seaweed. The light aqua usually is used for the background. Um, the brown and the black. So it just depends on what hair color you choose. Some people choose the golden yellow for the hair. You can use orange and copper for the hair, or you can use black and brown. So um, whatever you use for the hair, just kind of keep that in mind when you're choosing your, uh, your tail colors. But other than that, also your glitters are, you've got like a hot pink and an aqua glitter. So um, that might uh, change your decision too. I wanted to um, find out the best way to use this glitter. I've decided to use aqua. So I just went ahead and clipped the corner of this little bag, make sure it stays sealed. And then um, I'm just going to tap it. And that way you don't get a big blob of glitter all in one spot. You can kind of tap your hand too. Just hold it still and then tap your hand. And that, that works nicely. Oh, isn't that beautiful? That is so pretty. I can't wait. I hope you send me some pictures of yours. I bet yours is gonna be prettier than mine. All right, okay, awesome. We're gonna do the fin, okay? So um, I decided to save a little bit of the periwinkle because at the end, I'm gonna show you a little bit of a special technique um, that I actually do a wash in the background. So um, I think I'm gonna just do dark aqua for the fin open that up every once in a while you have to stir your paint a little bit um, sometimes they'll separate in shipping okay so um, doing this I'm just going to I might add a little water I just dipped my brush in some water and just pull the strokes down
I like just using some nice brush strokes. It kind of gives the the fin kind of a, you know, just the, the nice flow of the direction of it. You know, you can dip in another color while you're doing this too. How about a little bit of purple? That's pretty. Oh, that sparkly purple is beautiful. So yeah, just be creative. You can even put a little bit of plaster in the tail and if you want and pull through like you did on the scales. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna close up my other colors and I want you to make sure that you rinse out your brush really well. So get all the color out of it and, and use your clean paper towel and just gently dry, dry your brush. And I'm gonna scoot my palette around and open the skin color. All right, so I'm gonna paint her face and her arm. So you're just gonna do a little bit of paint right on the tip of the brush. That way you can get some nice detail. So um, you notice how I anchor my hand onto the board so that I can be careful. That way my hand doesn't shake. All right, so I'm gonna cover the aqua line just a little bit. I'm gonna leave the eyelash there. I love how well this paint covers. You don't have to go over and do a whole bunch of coats because it's really, <clears throat> really good paint. Okay, so I'm gonna do her arm. I've got a little glitter on there, so actually that might be kind of pretty. She just has some natural sparkle, mermaid sparkle. So here I'm going over the line about halfway. So you don't wanna completely cover over the outline. All right, and I think that's finished. Okay, so next we're going to do the seaweed, and what you want to do is Dry off your brush again. Make sure that it's all clean. And you're gonna go to your Hunter Green. Open it up. You might wanna see it. This one needs stirring a little tiny bit. All right. Kinda, when you stir it, you wanna pull that excess off of your brush because you don't want it too much on your brush. So I'm gonna show you how to how to do the seaweed. So you're gonna take, it's just kind of like a brush stroke and pull it. See how I'm kind of covering the aqua line mostly? Stay on the tip and you press a little bit. There we go. All right. All right, are we ready to keep going? So I'm going to do the background next and I am opening my light aqua to do the water. I'm trying to. There we go. Okay, so the whole background is going to be painted. You want to kind of stay clear of your seaweed until it's dry. It's a little bit wet. So you can see from your picture, we're going to do all of the background. You can kind of, you know, go around the bubbles, but we're not doing underneath here because that's where the sand is going to be. So um, 
I'm just going to show you a little bit of that and then I'll, uh, I'll see you when it's all done. So let me go ahead, let me do the bubbles so you can kind of see how to get around those. So you just kind of put it on and you smooth it out. Look how nice that paint is. This paint is great. This is acrylic paint. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. You know, you can hang this on the wall and it's got a little hanger on the back. So even if you don't want to frame it, you can still hang it up. And so I am coming closer to the bubbles and just going to go around. And then I think I'm going to fill that bubble in a little bit with just a little circle. Here we go. See, these are too wet right now, so you don't want to go close to those until they dry. So I'm going to go around and do the rest of the color. So let me do the eyelash and show you how to get close to the eyelash. You see how I'm just going real careful? You just take the tip of the brush, go real slow around the eyelash. We are going to paint the eyelash black at the end, so. And I'm going to take the very tip and go up the hair. If you make a mistake, you can just wait for it to dry. Like if I wanted to add a little bit of to the, you know, where I went over the skin accidentally, just leave it there and then you can touch it up after it dries. So you can add a little more skin color. It might be easier than trying to wipe it off, just depending on where you're at. So um, this aqua line on the hair, I'm actually going to paint over most of that. Okay. Quickly show you how to fix, like I dropped a little bit of paint here. So if the background is already dry, you can just literally just take it like that and take a little water touch it with your finger and wipe it off and you know this is just a this is a piece of masonite that we're working on and so you don't have to worry if, if you make a mistake you literally can just wipe it off so um, I don't want you to freak out if you make a mistake it's it's okay it'll be all right so um, I'm gonna just go ahead and finish this and we'll be right back all right I hope you're having as much fun as I am I just love doing this. So we're going to do this beautiful little crown of shells in the mermaid next. So the hair is still a little bit wet and so I want you to open your shells. You've got a little sand in the bottom so you don't want to pour that out because we're going to save that for the bottom. But you just open your bag and you can take some of the larger shells out. Or maybe you can get like a little paper plate or something and dump all of it on there. There we go. All right. So some of these shells are going to be used for down below and some of them you'll use for her, her crown. So you can just look through them and decide how you want to do it. I love these little butterfly shells. So I live at Pensacola Beach, and a lot of these shells we found at the beach. So I don't know if you've ever been to Pensacola Beach, but it is absolutely gorgeous. The sand is pure white. It looks just like sugar. So I've actually got a little bit of that awesome Pensacola Beach sand in my kit. How cool is that? All right, so got a little little dark piece there. 
I love these little bitty ones too. So you just kind of press those in into the plaster. If your plaster is already dry, get a little glue and glue those in, but for the most part, they should just stick right into the plaster. You also could use, if you don't have glue, you could use a little tiny bit of plaster and just squeeze it and you know put those on there to make them stick. All right, that's too cute, isn't it? So I've got extra some shells left here. So next I'm going to um, clip my second bag of plaster. So you squeeze that corner and you clip it. All right, and then you're gonna do just like you did for the hair and put your plaster at the bottom. And I'm gonna teach you how to make this look like um, real sand. You're going to need a clean paper towel for this part. Okay, so first you want to kind of smooth it around. I love to paint when I get back from the beach. I love to just find all the shells that I found and put them in my paintings. All right, so now you take your paper towel and you crumple it up. So I'm gonna use, like I've got paint on the back side of this, so I'm just gonna crumple it like that so there's no paint on the front. So it's kind of like a ball. You make it like, like kind of round. And then you're just gonna bounce it, like just up and down. Look at that, that looks just like sand. Is that cool? And as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna take my shells and put them in. I love this one. I just love that one. Isn't that pretty? I'm not sure where I want to put that one. This is cool too. Look at that. That looks like a that look like a baby oyster. Isn't that awesome? Alright. I bet you, if you've ever been to the beach, that you have some shells when you went on vacation that you'd like to put on here. You know what would be cool is a little starfish. A little starfish would be awesome on here. All right, so I'm gonna take the sand and just kind of sprinkle, sprinkle the sand on afterwards. How fun is that? All right. So uh, Heather has been with me for about 10 years working with me and she's actually holding the camera right now, doing an awesome job, right? And she noticed that there's a little spot right here, good eye Heather, where I missed a little bit of aqua. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in. Everybody say hi Heather. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> All right. Okay. So wash your brush. Now we're going to do the hair. This is the cool part. So for this part, you need clean water. So you definitely want to go dump this out and get fresh water. Yay, I got clean water. Awesome. All right. So I think I want to make my mermaid blonde because blonde mermaids have more fun. So let's like the picture. You can do, like I said before, you can do black or brown. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And there's just different ways to do it. And like you can do some highlights. Um, but one of the things is this is still a little bit damp. 
So the main thing is that you don't push really hard unless you want to wait for it to totally dry. But see, as you can see, it's dry enough for me to kind of press on it. So um, if yours is, I'm going to add a little water. Um, if yours is really wet, if you painted really fast, then you're going to want to wait a little bit. Um, and I, the only reason I'm adding a little water is just mine's dry enough that I can do that and it's just kind of helping the paint flow a little smoother. You gotta be careful with the water though because if the plaster's too wet it's gonna you're gonna lose your curls. You can't have a mermaid without. kind of going around the shells so I don't get paint on those. Okay, so I cheated. I went and used a hair dryer on her hair so that I could dry it. It's still a little bit wet, um, but I'm gonna go ahead anyway. So I think I wanna use copper. So there's also gold, the metallic gold would be really pretty for her hair, but I'm going to try the copper first. You can kind of look at your picture and see. I, I like this hair better, but I just added some to the edges. So I think I'm going to add a little water to it. And now I'm here, I'm using my palette. I'm just going to thin out the color a little. Use the center of your palette and just make the color a little bit thinner. And that way, when you drop it in, you can kind of pick up some of that pretty texture. See how that texture shows? So I'm just kind of skimming the surface and letting that texture fall down into the cracks. Isn't that pretty? You don't have to do it that way, but I think it's kind of cool. Look how it's like, it's showing, you know, it's showing all of your curls, making your curls show up. So you notice how I'm just like dropping the water right into the curls. Okay, I want to show you something that is not on the instructions and so this is something that I did. This is a little added bonus on the video. Um, so it's just a little shadowing and you don't have to do this if it seems complicated or you like your picture just the way it is, which you probably do, um, but you could just watch. This is this technique, it's called, this is called a wash. So I'm going to take a little bit of the periwinkle and I'm adding some water to it. Make sure your water is not like real dark. So you see how thin that is? I'm just using my palette and making a nice little thin color of the periwinkle. So what I'm doing is I'm putting that in the background just real thin and I'm just going to make it like at the bottom so it just kind of looks like maybe there's some water flow. I'm even going to go make sure that your seaweed is dry. I'm going to go over the seaweed a little. Just kind of gives you, you know, the, the water gets darker. Like the farther down you go in the water, the darker it gets as you go towards the bottom. You can go over the mermaid a little. That kind of softens your mermaid out a little. And then just yeah, just do a few more up a little bit higher. And so that just really gives it a little bit more movement. And so you can also add a few shadows at the bottom, same way. So your plaster's still wet, that's okay. You just kind of bounce this color around. Make sure you add some water to it so it's not too, too dark. But 
we'll just put like a little blue periwinkle shadow, shadow underneath the mermaid. Using plenty of water, just gonna make a nice little shadow. You can even do some little shadows around your shells, that's kind of cool. And I think it'd be pretty to have a little bit of periwinkle maybe up in there, like around the shells, so it looks nice. You know, just wherever you might have some shadows. So I think that looks nice. So um, also I wanted to show you some of these little spots where, um, you know, I've got some aqua showing. That probably would bug me. So I probably would go back and just kind of, you know, just touch it up. And you can make your aqua line disappear altogether if you want to. So you can make it as detailed as you want. So you can kind of stand back and look at her and see how you feel. Now I'm going to do her eyelash real quick. So you, if you're not real good with the tip of the brush, you could use a marker, uh, like a you know a black marker. Um, but if you don't have one of those, or you could use a black colored pencil, I'm going to show you how to use the black paint to do it. So you make sure you find the tip on your brush. You see, you get that point. And you're just gonna use a tiny bit of black. Make sure that it's stirred so you don't just, if you don't stir it, sometimes you just get water. So I'm gonna turn this around so I can reach the eyelash better without getting my hand in the paint. I'm gonna anchor my hand, make sure there's no water. Anchor my hand on the, the dry background and just use the very tip and make that eyelash, there you go. All right, and I think she is finished. So do you love it? I hope you love yours. I do wanna show you something else. So um, I have a lot of different kits. Heather, we, are we up to like 34 different ones? So we've got At least. Christmas ones, we've got some for fall. And this one is adorable. This is a, one of my best sellers. But I wanted to show you that this is, this is epoxy. So what we've done is you order the kit and you paint it. And then we don't have it on the site right now, but we're gonna make it to where you can order the epoxy and do this yourself. So I'm gonna do a how-to video and show you how, and you can even order the glass through us. So that's coming soon. So if you do your kit, um, you know that you can kind of be looking for that. And uh, it really makes it sparkle. Isn't that beautiful? Did you get a close up of that, how sparkly that is? So this is just, um, that's just broken glass added into it. So um, anyway, you can check this out at ellensartkits.com, ellensartkits.com. And I hope you share this with your friends. And uh, right now is a really great time um, since everybody's kind of home uh, to, to have some fun. So I hope to see you soon.